Well, part of Al Jazeera's undercover investigation includes an airport security manager at the Zimbabwean Civil Aviation Authority explaining how the smuggling is carried out. Anything, anything you need to take out of the country, mm -hmm. that is my area. You need to be telling me uh, what? what you are carrying. It will, it will also help in making some charges. Yes. If, he, for example, you are taking money, we need to know how much you are taking. Usually for money, it's, it's about 5% of what you are taking. But if you are taking precious minerals, gold, diamond, the prices are up. Alexander James, who's part of the Al Jazeera team uncovering the story, says this type of corruption involves different airports, banks and top government officials. Not all of the smuggling at the airports happens in hidden compartments of baggage or private airport officials. Many of the smugglers moving through the airport carry all the right paperwork. But that's because the export deals that they have are secured via bribery and corruption or through political influence. They're, they're corruptly acquired export deals. And to, to all intents and purposes, that is gold smuggling. It's true to say that Zimbabwe's political conditions make it incredibly vulnerable to smuggling. Uh, a recent report found that $1.5 billion are lost every year. Uh, through gold smuggling. Um, but really what we build over the course of this investigation is an international picture of the corruption. And ultimately it's all about control and whether that is controlling an airport through uh, officials there um, who can control what goes in and out. Or mm -hmm. as, as we discover in South Africa, if you can control a bank too, you can move much, much more money. We're going to bring in Eddie Cross. He's a former opposition member of parliament in Zimbabwe. He's joining us from Harare. Very good to have you with us, sir, in Al Jazeera. What's more striking about this? What's happening, how it's happening, or the scale of it? Well, to be, um, to be frank, uh, the two episodes that have been flighted by Al Jazeera so far have really not had anything that we weren't aware of. I mean, it's fairly well known uh, that a, a high proportion, 70% of the gold marketed in Zimbabwe is smuggled across our borders. And the cigarette, smoking, sm uh, cigarette trading activities, smuggling activities of um, the two Rudland boys is also a well-known feature of, of regional economics, if I can call it that. Uh, I think, the, I think the, the, the shocking point of the whole um, story for me has been the allegations about the involvement of the monetary authorities in Zimbabwe and the fact that this is money laundering on a fairly large scale um, and it, it might in influence the international authorities. We've just been taken off the grey list. Uh, South Africa has just been put on the grey list. Uh, because they thought that we had improved the way we were managing our foreign exchange flows and trade flows. Uh, this is uh, very damaging from that point of view. I think also the impact on, on Dubai. Dubai is now the largest gold market in the world, and they won't be happy at all with these allegations of them being in receipt of gold, which has no real origin. Um, and I think the world gold community is moving towards a time when they're going to ban such gold movements, similar to the blood diamond industry. Mm. Uh, so I think it's, it, it, it's very serious. Um, none of us at, at, in Zimbabwe are, are, are saying it isn't. Um, the question is what to do about it and how to regularize the situation. And uh, that, I think, needs attention. The other thing I'd, I just thought I'd say to your, your colleagues, I watched episode two tonight, and the allegations about the involvement of the president, I think, are very, very shaky. Um, I don't believe that he's involved in, in, in this sort of activity indirectly. And this allegation that $200,000 buys an appointment to see him is just plain rubbish. Um, Let me ask you then. There was a time. Forgive me for there interrupting, was a time but. When the... one of, 
I'm, I'm so sorry for interrupting you, but I do want to pick you up on one thing or get you to, to expand on one thing. If this is so intrinsic to society, where does the responsibility for oversight lie? Does it lie with the banks who have perhaps failed in that regard, or does it lie with successive governments who are aware of the situation and either cannot or will not do anything about it? I think it lies with government, uh, ultimately. Um, I don't think you can really blame the banks. I think the banks will take very swift action against the individuals who've been identified tonight. Um, but ultimately, you know, I've been absolutely mystified as to how 70 tons of gold transit the South African border, and we never see anybody being arrested. And that simply points to collusion at the highest level in South Africa. It's the same with cigarette smuggling. They catch the odd, odd consignment. But we know that cigarette smuggling on a very large scale takes place across the, the, the border with South Africa. Uh, the industry is massive, and billions of rand are involved. And uh, I do not understand why the authorities, who clearly must know about this, uh, why they don't, don't take more effective action. Mm. I want on to ask you about— On our side of the fence— Sorry, go on, please. Yeah. I was going to say, on our side of the fence in Zimbabwe, I think we have a real obligation to put our house in order and to do it quickly. And I know we know how to do, we know what to do. And it wouldn't be difficult and it wouldn't cost us any money. We'd actually make money out of the deal. Mm. But, you know, that's a political decision. Yeah, I want to ask you about that because uh, our report was saying there that it's estimated there's about $1.5 billion that's lost every year to the economy. Clearly, that is money that any country would be glad to have. How do you break the cycle in this? Because if it's reaching from the, the lower levels right up the way to the, the highest echelons, as you were talking about, where do you break that cycle and start to change the system? Well, I, th I think the $1.5 billion is an underestimate, substantial underestimate. Transparency International reckon we've lost $100 billion US dollars since independence 42 years ago. That's more than $2 billion a year. Um, I think the losses through this kind of activity run to many billions of dollars. Uh, but look at look at the Gupta scandal in South Africa. I mean, <laughs> my goodness gracious, the scale of that and the audacity. Um, you know, it's, it's just mind blowing. And, Let me ask you about clearly, the point that you, you made. Know, we, let me ask you about a point that you made earlier on. You said that the banks were likely to take very swift action as a result of uh, what they've been learning. We've heard already in the report that some of them are, are already addressing it. And yet you did mention that you were not able to work out how the government was actually going to respond to this. What would be the best way for the government to respond to this? Well, I can tell you that uh, the so-called um, pastor, the, 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 the guy who claimed to be a Christian, a Christian pastor, has been stripped of his diplomatic passport. In fact, he's had his passport removed from him, and uh, the president has stripped him of all, all, all uh, status. Uh, he might, in fact, fail jail time. Um, I know that uh, one of the big white uh, gold traders has fled the country uh, with his family, and I would imagine that there will be other elements inside that story against which action will be taken. But, you know, the, the fundamental problem for African states, can we identify them as just plain African? You know, in maybe it's a global problem. Uh, this question of corruption and when it takes, when it takes root, the Chinese, I think, have the, the right approach. Uh, ch corruption is a criminal offense. And it is subject to the, the, the most severe punishment uh, that's in the book. Mm. And Eddie, uh, I think we've got to do the same thing here. Eddie Cross, we appreciate you joining us on Al Jazeera. Thank you very much indeed for your time, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. You can watch the second of our four-part series, Gold Mafia, Smoke and Mirrors. The full episode's coming up on Al Jazeera at 20 GMT.